And this is episode number 282. That's dos ocho dos. How are you guys feeling? How are you guys doing? Good. Amazing. It's been a while. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I've been trying to keep these up to about two a week now. Before, you know, when I had a bit more time and I had uh, a bit more... Uh, yeah, I say it's time on my schedule overall. I could fit in about three to four. At one at one point, I remember I did five in a week. But now, seeing as I'm you know quite busy with work and all the other stuff that I've got going on outside of the podcast, time is a bit constrained. So I'm having now to do these at least minimum. I'm trying to get them out twice a week. And if I can get three, that would be amazing. Um, I did plan to do a live stream for the Fury and Wilder fight, but I'm probably going to end up watching it somewhere. So I'll probably end up doing that. But do look out for some more content coming your way very, very soon on this channel. So don't delay. Um, sorry, don't stress. Uh, do not be worried. More content is getting pumped out. As I said before, I'll be doing at least a minimum of two podcasts a week. That's two hours of free content. I'll be pushing it on here on YouTube channel, plus all the other bits and bobs that I plan to do in the up and coming months. But again, no point in talking about that sort of stuff until I actually do it. So watch this space regardless um what have i been doing what have i been up to since i've last seen you guys so um this past weekend it was what valentine so that was a bit quiet end up just staying in really not really doing that much and then the day before that we went out to on the same night as valentine's because i guess i don't know valentine's day is sort of like it's i find it bizarre how valentine's day especially in london you know, it's pretty, we're a pretty, um, or how, how would you say, I, I would describe London as being quite woke, right, I'd be, I would describe London as being quite progressive, and I would also describe London as being, you know, there's a fairly large female population in London for the most part, and a lot of girly girls, right, you, you do meet a lot of girls who actually enjoy uh, basking in their feminine energy, let's say, yeah, right, so when you go to Liverpool Street, when you go to Soho, if you go parts of Lips, Shoreditch, you know, um, I'm assuming even places like Angel, Camberwell for nights out and stuff, right? You're going to bump into a lot of ladies who love being ladies, right? And those kind of ladies love Valentine's Day. They love birthdays. They love uh, colorful drinks. Um, they love stuff with glitter on it. They love photo booths, right? Those kind of girls love Valentine's Day. And you would imagine with that, with you know, quite a lot of them being in London, you'd imagine that we'd have a lot more, I don't know, activity around Valentine's Day. It feels like it, it was a bit flat. You would see, obviously, obviously, restaurants and bars kind of, you know, um, cashed out and were doing loads of, like, specials. Even the pizza shop next to where we live um, had these sort of, like, weird heart-shaped pieces that they were trying to sling, which is, you know, a bit naff, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. So everyone had their little hustle they were doing, but I felt as if like there wasn't the same amount of buzz. It wasn't really ringing off. I don't know Halloween, sorry, but Halloween, it's definitely Halloween for some guys out there, Valentine's Day, especially if you're a girl or your partner of choice. Um, Valentine's Day falls somewhere around their birthday. That's when you just want to shoot yourself in the face. I can just imagine how horrible that must be. Um, but yeah, it just didn't feel the same. Valentine's Day just came across a bit weird. It didn't. It didn't feel like it rang off the same. And again, I'm not sure if it's because it's been replaced by other birthdays. It's been replaced by birthdays for the most part. I don't know. For it's, it seems like every other week is some girl's birthday, and she's celebrating it for the week, right? That kind of. You remember there was a time when birthday week celebrations were like a funny thing, something to take the piss out of. Now, even your most boring of friend, even your most um, even even the most hermit of your friends, the one that's really like going out, has a week long celebration for their birthday, or at minimum a weekend. So that probably isn't that special anymore. So maybe some girls are in an effort to outdo each other. They're like, you know, they're doing away the Valentine's Day. They're like, you know what? I'm gonna put all my resources. I'm gonna put all my guilt trips, um, all my puppy dog eyes, right? All my flattering on my eyelids, on my eyebrow, or eyelashes, sorry, <laughs> towards my birthday so i can have the best one ever maybe i don't know but i, I just didn't feel like the same amount of buzz behind it so that aside because I'm, i'd remember you know why i'm saying that because we went out obviously on the friday we went to go see gerd jansen play at the dusky residency at xoy more on that later but usually when you go out on a friday when you go out, especially if it fell on a weekend or a friday or saturday if you'd go out most of the time when you're out and about, you definitely bump into loads of, you know, single people looking to mingle, right? It'd just be full of people just hunting for someone to kind of, you know, sh um, shack up with so they don't go home alone or feel like, you know, 
their life is nothing but misery. So th- th- that would tend to happen. But this time when I went out, nothing. It just felt like a normal night out. Did it? I didn't feel like there was any urgency. People weren't really trying. I didn't. Again, maybe I wasn't watching for the right things, but it felt like everyone I saw out who happened to be in a couple were, you know, prearranged. They'd have. They'd kind of rocked up together. I didn't really see any, you know, star-crossed lovers. You know, one guy's leaning across, leaning on the bar, unaware that his elbow is now covered in other people's beer. He turns around and sees a girl wearing those stupid feel of trainers, looking cute. They exchange glances and then suddenly they become the next Instagram couple where they're posing and the girl's doing that thing where she bends her knee and he's doing that thing where he kind of looks at the sky but looks down at the same time. Right? <laughs> so, I don't know. What do I know, man? What do I know? Anyway, so I went to go see Gerd Janssen play at the Dusky Residency in um, XOY, right? That was the first thing I did for the weekend. And how do I start this one without being disrespectful? So, the DJing was great. Let's just start with that. DJing was awesome. Um, Dusky, of course, you know, legendary UK duo. They play the right sort of music for that kind of crowd or for that kind of lineup. I think they're, they're quite... Ver- I think for the most part, most UK DJs, especially of that level, they have the ability to play in the different venues with different lineups and have no real problem, right? They can kind of... I think that's the beauty of growing up in London because we have such a big mix because because we're all just mixed into this tiny little city right and there's not many clubs around and we all kind of grow up um, on top of each other in the same sort of schools we kind of have the same sort of influences like i would i would you know what i would say because i think it's different in the u.s i would hazard a bet right that mostly every single person that you i've grown up with especially that's interested into music has heard a piece of music from a genre they don't like you know how if you'd go to america you might meet some black kid somewhere in Atlanta and you might ask him, oh, you might play him, a, I don't know, a, a Black Sabbath tune and he had no idea what it is, right? Um, I think you could play a Black Sabbath tune, um, some random jazz tune, some trance thing, whatever, just a song, and someone would have an idea where that current, where that sits in the genre category, right? They'd know. They'd be, oh yeah, isn't that like some sort of acid house thing? Like, because I think we all go out to these mad parties. Obviously, we found our niches as, as we get older, but especially in our younger kind of formative years, most of the parties we go to are just like, you know, just no holds, no holds barred, right? Especially if you grew up in like a rural town where they threw raves, people just played whatever, just whatever to, get, to keep the kids dancing, jumping and getting high and shit. So we have that ability. So I think any DJ that's kind of brought up in the London scene, who has kind of had to cut their teeth playing in random pubs and bars all across the city, all across the UK for the most part, I think they have the advantage of having a little bit more of a well-rounded musical arsenal or things to pull out of. And plus, obviously, the, the technical know-how because, you know, most of us grew up playing built on built drive turntables. Um, it feels as if the, the... Yeah, even the controller thing feels like it's happened only recently. For the most part, people just play with shitty CDJs they'd got or, like, really old-school pioneer CDJs or maybe older or maybe kind of really shitty dinner and stuff. Like, we just made do with what we had and kind of made it work. So put us on a lineup of like, you know, stellar DJs from all around the world. And for the most part, I think the UK guys will be able to hold their own, which would be quite cool if they had like a DJ clash thing or we had nations. I think the UK would give people a good run for their money, man, honestly. Um, be very, very surprising how good we'll do. But anyway, that side, Dusky did well. So obviously they were, you know, they're professionals, they know what they're doing. But um, I don't know what to say, man. I really don't know what to say about the venue itself. Um. The last time I the last time I went to XOY was to go see Mercy and Drum Ensemble play alongside I think Young Marco. I forgot who it was. It residency was Young Marco. I think it was might be Young Marco because XOY had do the do the residencies right every month. I don't know if it's every month, but anyway, some seasons they do residencies where they get a big DJ in, and then they essentially I'm assuming they're doing concurrent partnership with the DJ. They kind of collaborate on the lineup, and they kind of form a kind of you know a kind of program that runs over i don't know four to six weeks i don't know how many weeks it is and so basically what happens is that every weekend is a bit of continue there's a bit of continuity there so every friday you know that you're going to see dusky play and you're also going to see dusky invite some of their friends and family to come alongside and help along yeah, to play with them cool no problem so they got down good to play um Gerd and DJ House, right? Came and played all all night long, which is weird to say all night long. Oh, that was an agreement upstairs. Okay, cool. So Dusky, Gerd Janssen and Raw Silk. Raw Silk played right towards the end, right? And I think Gerd did like a three-hour set, I'm going to say. Three or two-hour set. 
so when we got in there dusky just had um was just about to wrap up i think about the last hour and then Gers sort of like got on and did his thing and obviously we still played um to kind of close the night out but the venue the venue the venue the venue man Again, the last time I went to XOY was when I went to go see Young Marco, uh, mostly Joe Ensemble play alongside Young Marco. And I don't remember it being full of that many nut jobs, man. Like, <laughs> to say the least, like, the crowd was horrendous, man, XOY. Now, should I be surprised? Maybe. Um, I think, considering it was a Friday in Shoreditch on Old Street, Considering that X a while do run tons of promotions, I'm always seeing their ads pop up on my socials. They're always trying to they they for the most part. I don't know if they find it hard to move tickets, but they're always trying to get people to come down doing two for one offers and competitions and stuff to come through in my inbox. Um, it seems as if they're always pushing it really hard to like the general public. So it's a weird place because they book really for, they've got a really forward thinking lineup, right? Loads of really cool electronic music acts that we all know and love from the dance music scene but they also are very open to just having anyone and everyone rock up to their nightclub right there's no real selection process as long as you're well behaved in the queue because the queue is a bit mad right it's on both sides of the road when it gets full you kind of have to go and stand around these barricades and then you and then there's a gap between where the building and then the guy lets you through another barricade gives you a token and then that token is basically a way for them to ensure that you are in that queue. So when you go to the next queue, the person asks you a token, make sure you haven't jumped in. And then when you go through that barricade, you get searched. And then you go in for a door, hand your token back to a woman at the thing. It's just a fucking nut. And again, it's not fabric, don't get me wrong, but it's a hassle to get in there. And once you're in, of course, it's a fairly decent nightclub, right? Decent sound. Um, I would say the sound maybe dissipates a little bit if you're not standing next to where the speakers are. It can sometimes feel a bit muffled, but for the most part, it's pretty cool. Um, I, I quite like the, how they've got those race platforms. They've got these little platforms that happen to be on either side of the DJ. So if you're if you're in DJ booth and you're looking out, you've got a platform on your left, platform on your right. So it probably does give quite a good sense for the DJ to kind of read the crowd because you've got this high end platform where you can literally see people's feet, right? See how they're tapping. And you can also see people's hands and heads as you're looking down. So that's quite a cool view. And for the punters too, you get the added advantage of seeing the crowd, seeing everyone go crazy in the crowd, obviously, and obviously seeing the DJ. So that's all well and good. Um, security was a nightmare, I'd say, inside the club, not so much so outside. They come out, they in, they kind of, they kind of uh, circled the nightclub or the dance floor every 10, 15 minutes with their flashlights on, making sure anyone, no one's doing anything untowards on the dance floor, which kind of ruins the mood because, again, they got to do their job, don't get me wrong, but they they really cut through the dance floor. They didn't even go an outside perimeter. They probably like weave in and out with their little flashlights, making sure no one's doing anything silly. But again, it just it takes ruins the night. Um, I'm not I'm not expecting it to be the cause. It's not going to be fold, right? It's in the middle of Old Street. They have obligations. They have payroll. They can't afford to have any, you know, missteps and stuff. I get that. But I think it's a little bit extra. They could probably do them 20 minute, half an hour intervals. Maybe not have so many of them at the same time. But it's just, it's a bit aggressive. And it seems as if like the guys like, I don't know if they're incentivized to like catch people, but they seem really on job. Like they were really eager to make sure they caught someone. They, I think they might have caught a couple people from what I saw. People getting dragged to the side and stuff and getting spoken to. I don't know what happened. Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't like, you know, take my word for gospel. But yeah, I think the venue kind of warped my impression of the night. As a DJ, obviously, God was awesome. Um, you could really see the way he kind of was able to kind of uh, take the crowd on a real musical journey. Um, he's a real good um, I think he has a real good understanding of the room. I think that must come from all his years playing at Robert Johnson, those marathon sets for like eight, you know, 12 hours, or whatever, maybe uh, back to back with um, Atta and stuff. So he, they, they do some marathon. So I think all that training has really helped in the way that he understands the crowd. Um, I've never seen someone look up as much, as especially a professional DJ, look up and really look at the crowd and see either what they're vibing to. Um, he does that quite often, which is quite cool to see. Obviously, he, you can tell he has a predetermined set that he kind of comes in with that he knows is going to work, but he also does try and move things around and try to work them well. I like that he doesn't really use effects to that much extent. He does loop a bit, but for the most part, there's no real crazy filters and high passes and low passes all the time and laid on effects. It's all just really simple and a way just to kind of really kind of, you know, he does obviously the, the classic, you know, kind of stretch, hang out the drop a bit. 
and the bridge and kind of looping some of the chorus and some of the vocals that's quite cool but for the most part it's very simple like um approach to djing where most of it most of the work is done by you know how to say like eight percent of losing weight is your diet or ninety percent whatever it is most of his work is done in his hotel room wherever selecting the tracks putting through a playlist downloading demos getting them in the right order and then coming to play them is like kind of the final cherry on top of the cake so that was an amazing thing to see up up and close up close and personal sorry um and yeah in the end no problem but i think again the security was a bit mad the crowd was random i think maybe because of friday night in the middle of old street you had the after work crew you had people that were coming through because they wanted to see dusky people that come through that want to see girl people that want to see come through to come and see dj house or horse how you pronounce his name um uh, then you also had the people that were coming through to do their Valentine's thing. We met a cool little couple that were there, a younger couple that were there um, celebrating Valentine's Day. And they were amazing, but they were there for the vibes and the music, the proper music fans. So that was, you know, that's there's but there's other people that you know weren't necessarily in that same sort of vein. And yeah, man, just a strange crowd. And then obviously you got people like us who are going there, who are proper, like, you know, geeks for the music. So it just made for a very bizarre crowd i just gotta say and obviously and also on top of that i would say again i'm not sure if this is true or not but i would say i think i think they oversold the venue or they kind of you know maybe um packed more people in there, in there than, than they should have honestly it's insane like it was so full like it, you couldn't move and i don't know if it was full because you know again that's he's popular and good the answer is popular but you couldn't move, man. It was so fucking rammed everywhere. Um, they probably it definitely was oversubscribed. And then at the end, we had to go get our coats. Oh my god! Fair enough. The cloakroom is tiny and it's upstairs, right? Up a narrow kind of stair stairway or stair hall, whatever you call whatever you call that name of it. But Jesus Christ, it took like a million years to get up the stairs, man. It was so insane. Um, yeah, man. So mad night. Um, all in all, good DJ performance. Uh, terrible venue um overzealous security guards and just you know a weird crowd so i don't know if you're gonna go x or y or know what to expect maybe maybe go on the saturday that might be a better time to go because you you know there's maybe less weekend warriors out um but yeah i wouldn't go back again i, I don't think personally just for me um i don't think it's worth it uh, even though they book great djs and stuff i'd much rather see someone like a girl play in a in an environment where you know i don't know i don't know it's weird, isn't it? Because London's so shit with venues like that. So I guess if you're trying to book someone like Gerd, you want a good enough venue to make it worth your while. It's just hard to kind of pick, isn't it? Where do you go? But yeah, the less I said about that, the better, isn't it? Let's move.